Hello and welcome back and uh, in this video we're going to be talking about bindable property wrapper in iOS 17 and Swift UI 5. So bindable was introduced in Swift 5.9 with, with iOS 17. The bindable property wrapper uh, facilitates basically creating bindings to the properties of observ observable objects. It supports creating bindings to the mut mutable properties of uh, observable object without the need of add published property wrapper. Now the bindable property wrapper takes a property of an observable object and its value. When the property changes, the bindable property wrapper automatically updates the binding about the change and it automatically notifies it. Now to illustrate this better, uh, let's explore an example. Now pri prior to iOS 17, if we had a view model which would need to publish a data, then we would have like, you know, a code that would actually create uh, a struct with an observable object um, uh, protocol conformance. So for example, we would have a view model, something like this. So let's go ahead and okay. So uh, we already have that. So I'm just gonna rename this. Uh, so, anyways, uh, basically uh, the intent for this uh, code to show you, like you know, this is what prior iOS 17 uh, looked like whenever you want to create a view model, which would actually have properties that would actually publish data uh, in order to uh, use that inside the view. Now, starting iOS 17, basically this has all changed and now you're gonna basically just use a bindable property. Now, what would be the result for this one? So let's go ahead and uh, take a look like, you know, when you have view model like this, uh, what kind of uh, view you gonna create? So uh, let's create a struct uh, with uh, um, observable object example okay so in this case uh, what we would do is uh, we would actually create a simple view right and uh, this this view would use this view model uh, with the help of state object okay so we're gonna create state object private of our course is equal to DT course uh, DT course one, uh, that's where we want to use it. And uh, basically we're going to create another state property, state uh, private bar edit course. So we're going to basically uh, just create another variable uh, to define the state for editing state uh, for, for the view. Okay, so we're going to have a navigation stack in here. And uh, we, within the navigation stack, we're gonna have a V stack with a text which will show course dot title. And uh, let's set the font as title. And the text is gonna be, next text view is gonna be course is published, question mark. And this would basically show our course dot is published status. And based on the status, we're gonna display yes or no okay and let's go ahead and uh okay so let's go ahead and fix this so uh, all right okay so we don't need this right now and we should be good to go okay so now we have like you know a button which will Help us edit the course. Essentially, edit course is gonna be toggle in this case, and uh, we're gonna have a sheet. Uh, the sheet is gonna be presented when the 
edit course uh, state changes and the um, uh, the content for the sheet is going to be add new course which will take a course and we're going to pass our course parameter here or like you know course value here and uh, this whole thing is going to have a navigation title dev techie courses okay now uh, we don't have this add new course so let's go ahead and uh, create that struct really quickly and um, we're going to create this struct passing view like our uh, conforming to the view protocol and uh, now what we need to do is uh, we want to make sure that the course is passed um, and course is passed as a uh, as a reference okay so the reference uh, for like you know bas basically this um, state object now in this case we're going to basically pass the view model reference using observable or observed object observed object that means uh, this particular struct does not own but it only references um, the course so dt course there we go okay now we're going to create an environment uh, which is going to help us um, dismiss so we're going to choose the key path uh, st slash dot dismiss to dismiss the view okay and uh, for the body what we're gonna have is basically a form section course title and this is gonna have a text field uh, this text field is going to be bound to the for the title value it's going to be bound to the text course dot title okay yeah uh, dd course one actually and uh course dot title and then we're going to have another section here okay and uh this section is going to be uh called published stats or uh, status status and then for the body it's going to be a toggle and uh, we're going to say course is published and it's on it's going to be bound to the course that is published okay and underneath uh, this section we're going to have a button which will help us close this view. So essentially we're gonna simply call dismiss here. There we go, okay. Now let's go ahead and um, call this, uh, let's, let's go ahead and rename this. And uh, this is basically our observable, uh, not the observable object, it is basically our bindable example. Bindable example. So let's go ahead and call bindable example here. There we go. Let's go ahead and resume this. So what we should see basically a view uh, that actually shows um, our course, and then like you know we can actually make some updates uh, into this. And then we're gonna come back and see like you know how this flow is gonna change uh, when we move to uh, Swift UI uh, five and iOS seventeen. So. You have this view where we have like you know course and is published is set as no we're gonna edit the course we're gonna publish it and then close it and now course is published okay so this is the flow that we used to use in ios 17. now let's go ahead and simplify this using the observable uh, framework and observation framework so first we're gonna do uh, is uh, we're gonna import observation okay uh, this is a framework where observa observable is defined we're going to decorate our class our model class with observ observable uh, uh, property wrapper okay and we are going to simply remove this observed object now with this change we don't need to publish anything because by default everything is published uh, that's one change we don't use state object anymore but instead we use just like other um, property wrapper which actually maintains the state for the view called at state okay now 
this add state creates basically uh, defines that this particular view is the source of truth basically this is the one that actually maintains the uh, the reference for the course okay so this is the main holder okay and then we are basically going to change observable object to bindable okay so with all the changes our uh, view is basically ready and all the errors are gone so let's go ahead and try this out once the view is refreshed and then we're going to talk about the differences and stuff all right so we're gonna once again click on the view launch course is published close and course is published so there's no significant difference like you know at least in the ui side but you saw how our flow is much more simplified we don't have to worry about like you know what to publish and what not everything by default will be published uh, we have a better way of managing the state by using the state property wrapper and the references can be passed in using bindable now we don't again we don't need to decorate any of the properties uh, using add published property wrapper the state property wrapper can create the view model reference and the bindable property wrapper can work with the past uh, references now this flow eliminates the guesswork of when we should use state object versus when we should use observe observed object uh, object observed object property wrappers okay now the difference between binding and bindable is that like you know the binding and the bindable property wrappers both are used uh, to create a binding in swift ui however there are some key differences between two the binding property wrapper is a more general purpose property wrapper that can be used to create bindings to any type of value now the bindable property wrapper is specifically designed to create bindings of the property for observable object right these kind okay now another difference between two property wrapper is how they are created the binding property wrapper is created by wrapping a value inside at binding attribute versus the bindable property wrapper is created by wrapping property of an observable object in at bindable attribute also the bindable property wrapper is more efficient than at binding property wrapper and this is because at bindable property wrapper creates a single binding that is shared across all the views that are using it versus add binding property wrapper creates a new binding for every view that has to be used in so in general the add binding property wrapper should be used whenever you need to create a binding a binding property for an observed object or an observable object the binding property wrapper can be used like you know uh, in other cases where you've been using to just pass the reference and create that reference between the state and the uh, other property that's using it as a reference all right with that we have reached the end of this video where we actually learned about how we can change our flow from old observable object um, to new observation framework Thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in another video.